And a very good day. Welcome to another Catch and Carp Outdoors. The podcast that honors Minnesota's great outdoors. Glad to have you coming with us for about uh, oh, 20 or so minutes. I'm Joel Niemeyer, and I'm your host here for the uh, program today. And today we're going to talk uh, a little hunting, we're going to talk a little fishing, we're going to talk shooting sports, uh, we're going to talk a whole bunch of stuff with uh, one of the uh, only campfire clubs left. Uh, it's a uh, conservation organization uh, locally, the Gopher Campfire Club, as Carl Moline, president of the uh, Gopher Campfire Club, will join us to talk about that organization and uh, what they do. And the program today being brought to you by Benny's Meat Market in downtown Hutchinson. They're a family-owned and operated business. They're your old-fashioned hometown meat market that offers custom and wild game processing, in-house pepper sticks, sausage, and much more. And don't forget that grilling season, even though it's now September, uh, the uh, grilling season's still out there. And uh, boy, that meat from uh, Benny's tastes real good on that grill. Visit Benny'sMeatMarket.com for more details. And welcome back on the uh, program. Our uh, guest uh, today here on uh, Catching Carp Outdoors uh, is uh, the president of the uh, Gopher Campfire Club, uh, not too far from our studios here. Carl Moline is our uh, joy, is our guest here today. Good, uh, good day, sir. Good to see you. Nice to uh, nice to see you, and uh, uh, good uh, good good to chat again. It's uh, I know you, it's you or somebody from your group has come in a number of times over the years, uh, talked with all the different events you got, and it's just a a nice club for those folks that are interested in conservation and fishing and hunting and all those kinds of different things. So maybe we'll start off with just tell us a little bit about Gopher Campfire and what you guys do. Well, Gopher Campfire, it actually, it started out uh, 1910 was the first year. It was founded uh, Carlos Avery and Sam Anderson were the first president and vice president. And the Campfire Clubs started because at the time... I think we're about the only one left, but there are individuals that were concerned with the country becoming more urban, that individuals were losing that touch with nature and some of the survival skills and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And so that's why the clubs were originally founded and, you know, have expanded it. And we support the other conservation organizations such as Ducks Unlimited, Pheasants Forever, Minnesota Deer Hunters and stuff like that. Kind of a two-way street we support sure. each other in our events and things and, and it is kind of one of the one of the oldest uh, as you mentioned you, you got a lot of rich history uh, that that you can you, that you can go back on yes yep yeah like i say it's since 1910 the first campfire clubs i was looking it up last night they started about the 1894 somewhere around in there and expanded and most of them have gone by the wayside or they've turned into other rod and gun clubs and they've dropped the campfire type name Sure. Yeah. So, so at, at maybe 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 you don't even don't know the answer to this question. But I'll just throw it out there anyway. Do you know of any other campfire clubs? Maybe not just in Minnesota, but just over everywhere. No, I don't know any that are left. But uh, you know, at, at one time it was kind of a popular movement, and at the beginning, uh, Gopher Campfire is one of them that first petitioned the state of Minnesota to get our first game warden in the area. Because okay. at the time, you know, it was a free for all as far as the natural resources were concerned, and it was the individuals in that era that started realizing that hey, this isn't an unlimited thing. We have to protect some of these species, and you mm-hmm. know, to continue so that they're here in the future. Over, over the years, what has been the 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 message? The the what 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 do you want to get out to the John Q. public uh, about about your club? Well, I guess it's that, yeah, we're, you know, more for the education and, you know, enjoy the natural resources, but don't be a game hog. I mean, that was one of the biggest things in the early, you know, end the game hog mentality. Mm-hmm. Go out, enjoy it, only use what you need to use and put something back to you can't just keep taking. Sure. Uh, how, how how has it changed uh, over that, over 100 years, as you mentioned? Uh, how, how has... Uh, how has things changed? Uh, I guess, you know, and with with the a lot of the current game laws, you know, it used to be you went out and when they did finally set limits, you went and I know a lot of my grandpa was that way. You went out and you caught your limit of fish. Well, now mm-hmm. with the slot limits and stuff like that to manage 
more precisely all the different fisheries or the you know games you know certain areas there's point restrictions on bucks because they want bigger bucks in certain areas and stuff mm-hmm. like that you know now it's getting to the point where a little more scientific and they're trying you know try to manage individual areas instead of just a blanket law because not everything sure. applies to all areas and do you guys as a client you mentioned some of the groups you work with do you also then work with the dnr if if they come to you and say hey uh can you help us with a b c d e do you as work hand in hand a little bit uh, a little bit i guess one of the biggest things the club grounds is right on lake byron and the dnr has used that for a rearing pond for walleyes so we're in contact with them on that and you okay. know because that's historically been the sought after fish in minnesota is sure. the walleye so that's sure. one of the things that we work with the dnr on and it's not a whole lot we try to do the education things you know firearm safety stuff and now a lot of that that's one thing that's changed they're pushing that more to you do the classroom portion of it online and then you mm-hmm. come out and you have to find a club such as ours that they'll get together and do the, they have the field day where it's the handle, the actual handling of the weapon, a little compass reading, you know, just some of the basic skills to be out sure. in, the, in the outdoors. You, you mentioned a few of the events there. You, you talk about uh, some, some of those. I know from you know, right now, as we're talking uh, here, as we head into September, you, the gun safety and, and the hunting activities are all, are all pretty big, but all throughout the year, you have different events. What are some of the bigger ones that uh, that you guys have? Well, the bigger one, we and we just had our annual outing here the second weekend in August, and that's just uh, basically it's a get together and get to know your other club members. They had some trap shooting and stuff like that going on. This year's been a difficult year with all mm-hmm. the restrictions on things. Uh, usually, we have in every spring we have a wild game feed. And that's usually a pretty good turnout. Uh, like Dave Larson here in town does a lot of the cooking for that. And, you know, get people out to sample some of what's available for wild sure. game, you know. Uh, we try to do bluebird days. Again, this year we couldn't have that. And that's you can bring your kids out. The building materials are supplied. There's a short program. And then the kids can build a bluebird house to take home and put up and hopefully get some bluebirds because that's one of the species of birds that's not as abundant as it once was. Mm-hmm. Um, our fishing contest in January, usually the last weekend in January, they used to go out and have it out on the lake and there was all that hassle and then dealing with weather. Well, then the one year it was so cold, so they went back to the clubhouse. to. There's a raffle that goes along with it, and they're doing the raffle, and one of the guys said, hey, this is the nicest fishing contest we ever had sitting in the clubhouse. <laughs> so from that, and now he's passed away, but it was uh, Bob Wendelek built the first fish pond, metal fish pond we have in there. And then so now the kids can come in, and there's prizes to catch the biggest trout and the smallest trout, and there's mm-hmm. some trout that are tagged. So we've gone that route, made it more specifically a kid-friendly event. You know, and that way it's indoors. You're not out freezing. Get them there just get to maybe some of these kids that don't get a chance to go out to a lake and fishing mm-hmm. can come catch a fish hopefully and just get that experience and maybe it'll spark their interest into pursuing outdoor activities uh, I, 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 I know for for my family I've, I've, I've taken my daughter out to that that fishing one uh, quite a quite a few years other than last year she had a <clears throat> showstoppers meet on it uh, but maybe talk about how the, the importance of youth because I know you with that uh, that fishing program you just mentioned, and there are you have a lot of other youth programs that you focus on. How important it, is that uh, focusing on the youth for the Gopher Campfire Club? It, it is our major importance right now, actually, because the average age of hunters and fishermen is increasing. And as to you know, the more we can get become more of a urban society, you know, it used to be. If you didn't grow up on a farm, at least grandpa and grandma had a farm, so you got out in the country and there were all those opportunities available. Well, now, mm-hmm. with only 1% of the population be- being farmers, kids don't easily have the stuff available. And so, yeah, that's the big thing. We uh, help with the, the high school trap team, shoots out at our facility, and, you know, hopefully you can 
can foster that and keep them interested in the shooting sports. And hopefully that also morphs into that they interested in coming back to the club to help continue the club in the future too. And the 4-H shooting sports uses our facilities that's on Wednesday nights. They come out because they have archery and trap shooting and I think air rifle and possibly 22 also. I'm not sure at all events that they do, but you know they come and ask, can we use the grounds? And yes, great, come on out because if we don't help mentor the youth and you know you lose any more in the way our society is you lose your numbers you lose your political pull for trying to get anything you know money going back into the natural resources too you, you mentioned uh, you know, the you know, the trap team shoots out there and i've interviewed the hutch bass team on this program before uh, do you like those you know, that competitive outdoors because i know when i was when i was a kid the only you, you saw some you know bass pro fishermen on espn once in a while but not a whole lot and it seems like it's getting more uh more prominent more popular just getting more in numbers nowadays yeah and i think it's a good thing especially with the kids i know i was watching on some cable show one time, and it was the high school bass tournament, and you could win a scholarship if you won that bass tournament. Some people aren't real crazy about the fishing tournaments because, you know, you're going in, and a lot of fish do get pulled out of a fishery during that. Sure. But keeping kids interested in that, and it's another thing, too. I wasn't involved in any sports in high school, you know, None of that was available. Of course, we didn't really need it. If you wanted to go hunting or fishing, you just went. Mm -hmm. But now it's a way to get the kids, because especially, you know, there's a lot of either broken homes or both parents are working just to make a go of it, and the parents don't necessarily have time to get their kids out doing this stuff. And like that trap shooting, I wish they would have had that when I was in high school. (laughs) Because <laughs> it would have been an activity that, hey, that's, I want to do that. You know, it might sure. have kept me from doing some other things that I maybe shouldn't have been doing at that age. <laughs> well, we'll go on from, from we'll, just, we'll just leave that topic uh, topic alone here. But it is nice to, to, to get some of these programs out there. How about going into the future now, whether it's youth or adults, or, or what are some of the priorities uh, that you want to see for Gopher Campfire going into the next few years? Well, I, I think continue with the youth. Because if, like I say, if we don't keep them interested, and and it's tough with the kids to have so many things available now. And and most of our membership is, you know, I'm middle-aged, and a lot of our membership that's involved is that retirement age. And you got to try to get somebody to continue to have any of this stuff to keep going. And... So yeah, I think with the continue with the the uh, different groups coming out there, and a lot of times, and this year, of course, it it didn't happen either. We have that host that youth conservation day where kids can come out, and it was you know shoot a twenty two, shoot a shotgun, some archery, and just do different things just to get a taste of it. And that mm-hmm. I think that is the biggest thing that we do need to continue to work on. We have our you know our sporting clays league. And that, of course, has been down this year, too. And, you know, Pistol League stuff like that going on because marksmanship is an important part of conservation also. And, yeah, it's to keep mentoring those programs just to keep them going so it's available because when some of this stuff goes away, you know, it's tough, too, you know, if anybody wants to set up a shooting range anymore. You don't just... Mm -hmm go set up a shooting range. Well, some of these places, as urban sprawl happens, they get shut down, and once they're gone, they're gone. Because we do have a fair amount of members that are from the metro area. And they come out here, and they're like, well, it's worth driving that 45 minutes or an hour to get here because there aren't that many places in the cities. Those that are are quite expensive, and it's tough to get in and get a time to shoot. You know, sure. so that's one thing too, to try to cater to that stuff because, like I say, yeah, the more they get denied the opportunity to do it, the harder it is to keep any of these activities still going in the future. And I mean, the natural resources is a can be a very enjoyable 
experience and a it, yeah. good healthy experience. I, 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 it's it's the uh, it's the world's oldest social distancing. Yeah, you, you, you want you you, you yep. go out whether you're you're hunting or you're or you're fishing, you go out and you maybe got a buddy or two. And that's all you want to see along with a fish or a deer or a pheasant or, or, or whatever you're going for. Yep. And well, and like myself too, deer hunting, we have a fairly large group that goes. But yeah, you're there and you got the camaraderie in the evening, have a nice meal at the end of the day. But then, yeah, you're out in the woods and you're apart. You're in your own stands and it gives you that time with nature. Speaking of social distancing, I, I'm sure you guys, like everybody else, has been affected. How... How has 2020 affected you in this in this pandemic and it has affected Gopher Campfire? Well, like I say, a lot of our activities this year we canceled because, well, the wild game feed, we usually pack the whole clubhouse full. Well, you can't keep social distancing and still have the numbers there mm-hmm. to afford to put on that event. And, yeah, all the wild game is donated, but just the amount of ingredients that we have to buy, you know, to turn it into a sure. meal. and. Uh, like with our outing, then we went and got a whole bunch of the hand sanitizer stations and put around when you never really worried about that before, you know, you were just there, mm-hmm. it was a gathering and, and the people selling burgers had to provide masks and gloves and stuff like that, you know, before, yeah, you were handling food. So you washed your hands and you just worked in the burger stand. True. Well, now doing all that, you got to think that, oh, no, we can't just do that. We have to do our best to fit in with the guidelines Mm -hmm. because otherwise people get upset about that sort of thing. Sure. Now in a quote unquote normal year, would you be having like monthly meetings or events or, or or how, how would a normal year and not 2020 year go for you guys? Yeah. yeah, We have our membership meetings are the first Tuesday of every month at seven o'clock. And then as officers and board members, we have a board meeting the week prior to that. And we did, have to cancel a couple of the meetings in there. We have been having meetings because like a lot of organizations, you don't have huge numbers that we'd like to see more numbers show up to the meetings. But mm-hmm. I know how life is. Kids are in this, work is in the, you know involved with everything. So it is tough to get the people there. So we haven't really had to worry about having too many people at a meeting. We can still spread out. And I know the Sporting Clays League, which of course that's all outside, but the the number of teams because a lot of people chose to stay home because well you are getting together but you had to put up you know the sneeze shields between the counter when they come to pay for their rounds of shooting sporting clays it's not just an open mm-hmm. window you know keep that barrier between the individual selling the cards to the punch card for your round and. And then, you know, they usually would sell burgers and refreshments and stuff there also. Well, they only sold things that didn't have to be cooked or handled too much, you know, candy bars and a can of pop, something that could just be sure. quick and easy. You don't mm-hmm. have all the stuff available because that's more risk of contamination, I guess. Sure, sure. And, and, and I guess if, if folks like more information, I know you got a you got a, a great website uh, that I've uh, looked at a number of times. And if folks would like to get involved with the with, with the group, how does somebody go about doing that? Uh, the the easiest would be to come on down on a second Tuesday of the month at seven o'clock. Come to the meeting and uh, or come to any of our events. We did have this year with the outing. Be, being there wasn't a lot of stuff going on we did have some new people come out and that's great you know to see new faces and get more people involved and hopefully some of them hey that was fun let's go back again uh we also have a facebook page that a lot of times our events are advertised on that uh pistol league is thursday nights you know just come on out to the club grounds and say hey you know i want to check this out uh and i also shoot we have uh and this year we had a short season. We shoot, uh, it's called IR 50-50 matches. It's bench rest competition with 22s. And it was great. We had a couple other people that came out. and Oh, I just wanted to see what this is about. You know, and then everybody, sure. it's not like it's a real intense competition there. So you take some time and a couple of new people shot with us a little bit just to try it out. And had a, one gentleman stop in and he was just looking so well in between the, time match matches are half hour for each card in between 
that half hour, we take a few extra minutes and talk to the guy and tell him what it's all about. You know, that's the biggest thing. Check on the website. Got the calendar on there. It says what's going on when and just come on out and join. And, or, you know, just, or even if you want to just come out and check it out. I know sporting clays, you don't necessarily have to shoot the league. You can just bring your shotgun out and say, hey, I want to try this. What do we got to do? And uh, uh, Bob Williams and his wife, Jay, are the ones that do a lot of that. And then like Donnie Merkins and Jim Broad, they're out there and they help run all that stuff. And they'll point you in the direction of what you need to do. And you can just try it once and then maybe, well, hey, this is something I want to do because that league shoots every Monday. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just just stopping by and checking it out is the easiest way to do it, I guess. So, uh, it, 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 sounds, it sounds good. I know I've been out there many times, uh, been welcomed uh, for the game feed and others and other stuff as well. So, uh, hey, we appreciate you coming in here today, chat, chatting some outdoors uh, with us, and uh, we'll we'll chat again sometime. Oh, perfect. Thank you for having me. Thank you again to Carl for uh, stopping by here today on Catching Carp Outdoors. Uh, if you were uh, watching, we just uh, talked about some of the contact information. If you're uh, interested in uh, volunteering or joining the organization, uh, if you're watching this podcast on YouTube, we'll try and put some of that uh, contact information uh, on the screen right there so you can see that. If you're not watching it on YouTube, just put Go for a Campfire Club into uh, Google or whatever search engine that uh, you uh, go for, and uh, the information will pop up there. They got, a, as I mentioned, they got a absolutely fantastic uh, website that you can uh, go to. Hey, as we just uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Joel Niemeyer, and I'll join you next time right here on Catching Carp Outdoors. Don't forget, keep that line in the water. We'll see you next time.